Sweet Smith Home. I am Brittany and today's video I'm going to talk all about the options we were given for fertility treatments. So if you have not seen my playlist so far, um, I will link that below. I've got some other videos talking about our secondary infertility journey. Um, then also kind of our um, fertility testing that we did. And this video is gonna be about the treatment plans that my clinic gave to me in Dallas, my husband. So again, obviously this is very specific to my journey, my fertility journey, um, and some of the things that we are looking at, but it also might be good to kind of get an idea of what other people go through so you have an idea of like what to expect if you are in this journey as well. <sighs> Okay, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to hit subscribe if you want to continue following on our journey of trying for baby number three. Um, also, again, link down in the description box. You can go back and you can watch the playlist, which I will add this to, um, for our fertility journey. Let's get started. <laughs> First thing to know, um, I think this is like probably one of the most important things is we are struggling with secondary infertility. We do have two other children. Um, it's been a three year journey of trying for baby number three. After a year and a half, we did get pregnant and had a miscarriage. And it has now been a year and a half of trying since that miscarriage. Um, so we have proven fertility and through all of our fertility testing, they could not find a single thing wrong. Everything appeared to work and be normal. Everything appeared to be great um, for myself and for my husband. So that being said, <laughs> when we sat down with our doctor after the fertility testing, she ultimately said, I've got three options for you, three different levels kind of that you can take it and that we could stair step level one, level two, level three, or we could jump straight to level three, or we could pretty much do it however we want to. Um, first off for us, IVF, our fertility clinic does not recommend it, not because it wouldn't work, in fact it probably would work, but because they don't feel like it's necessary for us. Um, with our history, with the fact that they can't find anything wrong. If we were desperate enough um, and requested IVF, then they would obviously go through with that, but they don't think it's necessary. And me and my husband honestly are not gonna pay that much money to do IVF. Again, we already have two children. That's where we're at in our life and our journey and our conviction. Um, but I think it's a great option for other people if you have the money and if you just kind of wanna skip everything else and just go to the most likely to succeed <laughs> would be IVF. <sighs> okay, so for us, three levels. Level one, actually, and very surprising to me, was to not really do anything different, was to just keep trying as normal for one to three months. The reason my doctor even uh, suggested that is because I had a procedure called ACE. HSG procedure, also known as tubal flushing. So pretty much my fallopian tubes were slightly crowded and they flushed a dye through them to clean out my fallopian tubes to make it super easy for an egg and or sperm and or embryo or fertilized egg to travel. Um, so I didn't have a block, but they were a little bit clogged and it took a lot of pressure to flush them out. So because of that, she said our level one um, option, there are so many people at this target. <laughs> our level one option is to try for another one to three months, um, still tracking ovulation, you know, still doing the OPK tests and having time to intercourse, just like we've been doing for pretty much close to three years, on and off for three years. Um, so that was kind of level one. There is a lot of research to, not a lot of research, but there are slight increases in percentage, mm, 
there has been proven to be um, a greater chance of getting pregnant one to three months after an HSG procedure. So level one to, would be to try for another one to three months. If we didn't wanna do that or after one to three months, we could come in for level two and level three. Level two and level three are the exact same thing um, with an end result. Wow, that's a lot of people. Level two and level three are actually very, very close to being the exact same thing, which is a medicated cycle. My clinic does not just prescribe a medication and leave you to your own devices. Um, actually, it's like under a microscope, <laughs> everything you do on a medicated cycle, um, which is, has its pros and cons. A part of me really wished that we had the option to just take an oral medication and not do much more than that. Um, but I would have had to change practices and I felt like the options that they gave us were good to consider. So level two and level three start the exact same way with a medicated cycle. I would go in once my cycle starts, probably the first or second day of my cycle and I would have a baseline ultrasound just to determine that everything is good to go, that there are no cysts in my uterus or my ovaries. And after I kind of get that thumbs up, then my doctor would prescribe an oral medication, most likely Clomid, um, for me to take or orally for about a week, I believe, maybe five to seven days, I'm not exactly sure. So I would take the oral medication um, on my own, and then I would come in after I'm done with the oral medication to have a um, injection, so a shot of more medication. I'm not really sure what it does. Um, I believe it's called Minip Minipure? Minipur? Minipure. So if you know what that does, you can leave it in the comments below. But I would have another, um, I would have a shot. So after the oral medication, I would go in for a shot. And then a few days later, which would probably put us around like cycle day 11 or 12, I would come in for another ultrasound to make sure that my eggs and or follicles in my ovaries are like ready. They're like good to go. And as long as that gets the thumbs up, then I would get a trigger shot. So the second shot would be to trigger ovulation and I would ovulate within the next 36 hours. So that's where level two and level three become different. So they're the same up to that point, up to the trigger shot. Um, level two would be, I go home and have timed intercourse with my husband. Um, I get the trigger shot, we go home, we do our thing, we wait and see if we're pregnant. Level three would be after that trigger shot, I come into the office two more days to have an IUI done. Um, which means I come in with my husband's semen and they run it through something and then they inseminate. <laughs> you know, so there's an actual procedure done and that's done two days in a row after your trigger shot. So level two, level three. Our doctor said we can do this however we want. Obviously there's different price points. If we wanna just try it home for a few months, that's not gonna cost us anything. Um, the medicated cycle with timed intercourse for us was about would be about um, like $1,200. And then the medicated cycle with the IUI was gonna be about $1,700. Um, so both are under 2,000, but still a significant amount of money um, considering. So those are our three options. We've gone back and forth over kind of what the best thing to do. And we did decide to go ahead and try two to three months on our own to just give it a shot to raise up some money or save up some money not raise money um to save up some money to do most likely an iui if this doesn't work on our own um, after the tubal flushing so if we do not get pregnant um on our own in the next few months we will be going through an iui um i will document the whole thing bring you guys along with it me obviously um so you can expect that maybe um in the next few weeks i'm obviously gonna kind of film the whole iui process um versus like just day by day stuff just because it's easier and then i can kind of go back and process everything that's happening so if you have had an iui or you've had um gotten pregnant like success stories of getting pregnant after an HSG procedure I'd love to hear those in the comments below if not 
and you're kind of on the same journey as me in the beginning stages, I'd love to also connect with you in the comments below because it's hard. It has been an emotional roller coaster, not just for me, but for my husband as well. Um, we've definitely had really high highs and really low lows. Um, sorry I keep saying um, but yeah, it's just been a crazy journey, one that we really didn't ever expect to be on. <sighs> But I, I feel hopeful over the next um, few months that we will get to have a success, that we will have a positive pregnancy um, or have a pregnancy. Now what comes after that, there's a lot of fear, um, especially with going through a miscarriage before. There's definitely a fear, there's definitely a stress, um, but we're just trying to like take it step by step and live in the moment and be excited and be hopeful and you know just kind of leave it leave it with hands open to God and see what happens over the next month. So thank you guys for following along with our journey so far. I will be sure to keep you in the loop, but it might be obviously quite a few weeks before you kind of hear another update. All right, you guys. I got this Good talk. I will see you in my next video. Bye. I don't know how it came about.